Amen. Amen. Thank God I'm saved. Amen. 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 Miss Faye's mad with me. I was picking at her this. I was picking at them this morning in the prayer room back there, and the ladies come in. I said, "Yeah." I said, "Y'all missed it last night." I said, "Preacher preached on seven sins of the white housewife, and uh, he ain't preached nothing about no housewife." And I thought they knew I was kidding. <laughs> Title like that. I mean, you know, first thing you're gonna do is duck. And they went through nothing, so I figured, well, they knew I was kidding. Well, Miss Faye took it to heart. <laughs> she wanted to know what I. She said, "I ain't listening. You preach no more. You lie." I just joking. I have a little fun. Amen. Boy, I was glad when they said let's go into the house of the Lord. I wasn't tonight. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wouldn't take nothing from my journey now, though, would you? Amen. I appreciate that song the preacher just sung a while ago. And uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, this week our Sunday school lesson was in Acts chapter 3. And uh, I need that. Yeah. Our Sunday school lesson was in Acts chapter 3, and it dealt with prayer. And I was dealing with prayer this morning in our Sunday school class when we started off. We try to do a chapter a week, and if he gets, it, he gets into deep stuff, then we go deep with it. But uh, I'd like to share this with you before I get into the message tonight. I, uh, but uh, it says in chapter 3, verse number 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And... Uh, and that's when the lame man was there, laid at the gate. And Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. And they took him by the hand. He, his ankle bones received strength. He, he got up and he walked. And the Bible says he went to the temple leaping and run, re, running, uh, walking, leaping, and praising God. Amen. And when God gets a hold of you, you don't do something for you. Amen. But the, the purpose, the reason this young man got saved, I mean got healed, was because somebody went to pray. Yeah. Amen. And as the preacher sang that song, and I told our Sunday school class this morning, I said, I said, we ought not have fellowship without prayer. We ought not go soul winning without prayer. We ought not have uh, visitation or anything to do with church without prayer. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember back when, as a young Christian, I, I was all fired up. Man, I thought I could run through hell in a pair of gasoline shorts on. I mean, I, I, was, I was hell proof. And uh, I, I, I believe that. I really believe it. I'm hell proof now. But I tell you what, we'd go into church at night, me and a friend of mine, we'd go into church at night, and we'd just leave the light on in the vestibule, we'd, the rest of the church would be dark. We'd get up on the altar, we'd get to praying. Preacher, I mean, it would get real. It got so thick in our, one night we was in there praying, and I got scared to open my eyes. I was scared I was going to look in Jesus' face. I mean, that's just how the Spirit of God was in that church that night. I literally was scared. I was scared to open my eyes. I was scared I might see the Lord. I knew if I saw the Lord, I'd be in heaven. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it was just that real. And uh, I've seen God work many things through prayer. I've seen God work. But God, this week, God has really laid a burden on my heart. As I was studying my Sunday school lesson. If them boys hadn't went to pray, that old boy might still be crippled. Yeah. Hey Amen. You know, might have been crippled longer. It wouldn't be put that way. He wouldn't be now because if he said he's in heaven anyway, he done been made whole. But he was made whole before he went. But I, I thank God for prayer. Amen. Yeah. And so tonight before we get started my message, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. Just a short message. Won't take me about two hours. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for your many blessings. God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy. And God, tonight, Lord, we know we can do nothing outside of you. And God, I'm so glad tonight that I have a Lord that I can bow my head before tonight, Lord, and know that he hears me. Yeah. Father, Lord, you said that you, your ears are not shut, Lord. Lord, we know that you hear. God, Lord, we know, God, you said if we come praying and asking and believing, Lord, you said you'd do it. So tonight, God, I ask you, Lord, to hide me behind the old rugged cross tonight. That I not be seen, but Christ be seen in and through me. God, tonight, may I help someone, encourage someone tonight, Lord. That's what I want to do. Lord, I want to be an encouragement. And, Lord, we just give you the praise for all that's said and done. Bless the reading of your word tonight. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Acts chapter number, uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Amen. I'm all mixed up, ain't I? Acts chapter number, uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Get there. I'll get there in a little bit. Amen. Amen. I thank God I'm saved tonight. Amen. I want to read a few verses of scripture to you. Uh, about eight of them. Amen. Uh, just a little simple thought tonight. Bible says, verse number 1, chapter 4, verse number 1. 
Amen. If you could stand with us tonight, I'd appreciate it, and I know the Lord would too. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his, and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Boy, that's what God said to do. He said, preach the word, be instant. That means be ready all the time. In season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. A preacher that get in a pulpit and there, all he does is rebuke some people. He's missed a mark, hasn't he? But God said we're to rebuke, but he said we're to reprove them. But he said you've got to exhort them once in a while. Amen. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. We see that a lot. All you got to do is turn your TV on. You see that. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Brother Kenny, that's to me and you tonight and to our pastor and Brother Arnold, to all preachers. But watch thou in all things endure affliction. We're going to have afflictions. Do the work of evangelists. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I, am now ready, for I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the, right, the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that, in that day, at that day, that not, and not to me only, but unto all them that also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. I didn't mean to read that last verse. I meant to read stop at verse 8. But I want to preach just a few minutes, if I may, on, and, and look with me in verse, uh, verse number 6. He said, I am now ready to, to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. What Paul's telling us here is he's fixing to go home, and he's ready to go home. Amen. You can be seated. He's, 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 he's saying here, I'm ready to go, and it's about time for me to go. In other words, his ministry is just about over with. His work's just about done. And he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So Paul knows he's fixing to go. He's telling the people here, he's telling them here in Timothy that this is fixing to come to an end, and it's time for me to go. Well, I want to ask you a question tonight. Who will be glad when I'm gone? Ask yourself that question. Who will be glad when I'm gone? Because each and every one of us, we're going to check out of here one day. That's right. We're only here for a short time, and then we're going home. Right. Brother Arnold, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think, you know, I'm ready to go. Well, I am ready to go, but I don't really want to go right now. I mean, I, I enjoy living, don't you? I enjoy living. I, I'm sure everybody does. I enjoy uh, hugging my grandbabies. We was out in the pool today. We, I floated them around in the pool, just had a big old time with them. I love that. And I'd be lying if I tell you that I don't want to do that no more because I do. I, I can't wait till the next time they come over, Brother David, and I can get them out there and throw them around in the pool or laugh with them or play with them. And, and I, just, I just love that. I, I, I enjoy that. And, and I think everybody ought to. But I ask you a question tonight. Who will be glad when you're gone? Who will be glad when I'm gone? Notice with me tonight. Paul said this. He said, I have fought a good fight. Who's he been fighting? He's been fighting the devil, ain't he? Amen. First of all, tonight, Satan will be glad when I'm gone. Amen. He, I know he don't. Sometimes he thinks, well, I got him this time. Then all of a sudden, God will intervene and God will pull me out of it. Amen. God will make a way of escape. Amen. And I thank God for that. If it wasn't for God, we'd all fall. And the devil would have every one of us. But because of God's great power and God's great love and God's great mercy, the devil can only do so much. And then God said, that's enough. Amen. What did he tell him about Job? He said, you can do anything to him you want to. He said, but not kill him. Can't take his life. And the devil can't take my life. Amen. Only God can permit that. Amen. And so tonight, I want to say tonight, every time I stand up and preach, every time our preacher stands up and preach or anybody else does, it makes the devil mad. Amen. And Brother Kenny, he'll be glad when I quit fighting that fight. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. Satan will be glad when I'm gone. Why will he be glad when I'm gone? First of all, he'll be glad over in chapter 6 of Ephesians. He'll be glad because of the armor that I got on Amen. He'll be glad because of the armor that I wear. Look with me over in Ephesians chapter 6. We'll read that right quick. It won't take but a minute. I'm trying to hurry. Amen. Chapter 6. 
Look with me in verse number 11. He said, the Bible says, Paul said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The old preacher said one time they stand against the willies of the devil. Well, that might be so, amen, but it's the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to, able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about in tr with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith we, ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, which is what? The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always. There we go, right there. That's the killer right there. Praying. You want to get victory over the devil, you got to pray. You put all the armor you want to on, but if you don't pray, you're going to miss the whole mark. I believe that tonight. I believe that. Brother Corey, this morning when we was talking about prayer this morning in the prayer room, this verse of Scripture come to my mind. We got to pray. He said, pray always with all power and supplication. That supplication means we got to agonize with God. We got to get serious with God. We got to plead with God. God, do this. God, give me strength, amen, to overcome the wicked one. Yeah. And that's what it's going to take. Amen. And that's what it's going to take. The Bible says we have received power. We are over. He said, you are, you are of God. The Bible says in 1 first, uh, first John chapter 2, I believe it is. He said, Young, he said, you are of God. He said, you have overcome the wicked one. How do we do that? Through the blood, through Jesus. Amen. That's right. Praying always with all prayer and supplication and spirit and watching there and too uh, with all preservances and supplication for all saints. I want to say tonight, if I'm going to beat the devil, I got to put on the whole armor. I got to put on the whole armor. He knows he knows faithful Christians don't quit. The devil knows that. Look with me. Look in Jeremiah. You can turn over. Yeah, I got it wrote down. I, instead of flipping over, I just wrote it down today. Because I was, I was looking for this verse. And, and, uh, but look what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah said, Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Jeremiah sort of come to a place in the road that he just sort of the hills were higher and he wanted to climb. And he just comes disgusted and he said, I ain't going to make mention of him no more. I'm just going to give up. But watch what he said. He said, he said, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. That's right. <laughs> I know what that's about, don't you? You ever been somewhere, Brother Kenny, you just say, well, I'm just going to, and all of a sudden, God just throw a verse of script right there at you and just get in there and grind on your soul. Amen. I tell you, it's, it, it's like a fire in a bone, Brother David. He said, he said it was burning. He said it burned like a fire in my bones. He said, and I could not stay. <laughs> that word stay means I couldn't quit. Amen. Hey, man, I just come to one place in my life all, all in one verse. He said, I'm just going to quit. And then the next, next time he draws breath, he said, boy, that thing, that word just getting on to me. I just can't quit. Huh? You ever been in that place, Brother Arnold? <laughs> Hey, I tell you what, you, you, you go, if you pastor a church one time, you, it won't take long. You would say, boy, I tell you, I'm tired of this crowd. I'm leaving here. And God say, what did I do for you? God say, what did I tell you I'd do for Amen. you? He said, I'll be with you always, even to the end. Amen. And you just say, well, I got to go back. I just, why? His word is burning in our heart, in our soul. We just can't quit. He said, he said, I, he said I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Hallelujah. Well, number two, he said, I fought a good fight. He said, number two, he said, I have finished my course. Amen. Who else will be glad when we're gone? Sinners will be glad when we're gone. Amen. You know, when Jesus went over there and come up on that little boat over there in that gathering and maniac come out and been up there and the tombs cut itself and, and they bound him with chains and fetters. He'd break them all asunder. And Jesus come, he come running up there and Jesus took them, took them, Spirits, them, lead, them legion of demons hit him, right. throw them over in the hogs. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Where did them hogs run off to? The down to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, down to the beach. <laughs> Amen. But Brother David, Brother David, when, when they come out of him, and that old Gadaria maniac got his mind right, and he went to town clothed and in his right mind. And boy, I tell you, that does something for me. They said he was clothed in his right mind. 
And a lot of people didn't like it. Sinners don't like it. Sinners don't like it when God moves in. Boy, it makes them mad. You can get in some churches and God move in there and God will start moving blessings. And you watch about half of them, half of them will get puffed up mad because they don't like what's going on. Amen. I, I've been to some churches that if you went in there and preached a little bit of standard, you'd run about half that crowd off. Amen. What's wrong? They ain't never been saved. They've been in church all their life and lost as a ball in high weeds. I'm serious as I can be. I mean, I've seen it, and I'm sure you've seen it. Sinners will be glad when I'm closed, when I'm gone. Why? Doors won't be knocked on anymore. Amen? Cottage prayer meeting won't go on anymore. You don't hear much of that anymore. We ought to do that again. Yes, sir. You know, find somebody that's shut in, somebody that's sick, can't, get, can't go to church, and just love to have somebody come and tell them about Jesus, come and fellowship with them and worship with them. I bet it just blessed their heart. Witness in the seats. Witness in the seats when we're gone. All oh, sinners will be glad when we're gone. Sinners will be glad. They don't know nobody like them telling them, man, I, I never will forget. The fellow told me one time, I started pastoring him. I, I got all the names of the non-church members, and I told them, I said, I'll tell you what I want y'all to do. You bring me a list of all the non, non-active church members, and I said, we're going to start knocking on the doors. And they brought me a name. They brought this name out here. First name on the list was Mr. C.M. Blackwell. Anybody here know C.M. Blackwell? You ever know Mr. C.M.? Diane? Well, Mr. C.M. was when you, if you open that one door and Mr. C.M. would walk up there to it, he would literally take up that door. He was a big man. I reached out there and grabbed his hand one day, and it was like wrapping a bed sheet around mine or a pillowcase. It just disappeared. He's, he, he was a huge man. They said he slapped a man one time, Brother David, with one hand on the temple and put him in a coma for two weeks. One, one swat. He was a monster of a man. But not only was Mr. C.M. a big man, but he had a heart that was about that big around. They told me, he said, you don't want to go to that man's house, preacher. You don't want to go to his house. I went down there, little old me all jacked up, man. I was ready to go. I was a young pastor, and I wanted to save the world. Hey, Amen. That's what we do. So that's our job. We want to see everybody get saved. I went down, and I went and knocked on that door. Well, his wife come to the door. He wasn't there. Big old water chewing the back of her mouth. She walked out there. She sit down in the rocket chair on the porch. Got the rocket. I got to tell her about Jesus, about what Jesus had done for me. She got to cry. Snot got to running. Back of juice got to running. I left her on the front porch in the rocket chair, rocking with snot chewing the backer, tears running down her face. I just told her, I said, I'll be back when your husband's home. Went back down there, knocked on the door. I was waiting on somebody to come. By that time, the door just went black. I looked up and I, looked, I said, Lord, have mercy. What have I got myself into? There stood Mr. C. M. Black. I, he opened the door and I told him who I was. He, shook, he stuck his hand out, shook my hand. I went in his house and told that man in his house, I said, Mr. C.M., if you don't give your heart to Jesus Christ, I said, you'll die and go to hell. He went down to another preacher, pastor's an independent Methodist preacher down in Hartford. John, I can't remember Brother John's last name. But Brother John told me when Mr. C.M. died, he said, Mr. He said, Mr. C.M. told me himself that you were the only preacher to ever come to his door and told him he was going to hell oh. if he didn't get saved. And he said he respected you for that. Boy, there'll be a lot of sinners that'll be glad when I'm gone. Right, be a lot of sinners that'll be glad when you're gone. Why? Because we got the good news. Not many people want that kind of good news. It makes a difference, though. He said, I have fought a good fight. I finished my course. He said, I have third, number three, I kept the faith. Who else will be glad when I'm gone? Satan will be glad when I'm gone. Sinners will be glad when I'm gone. Saints will be glad when I'm gone. Amen. You, you believe that? Saints will be glad when gone. I'll tell you why they'll be glad. Because we'll see the victory of the faith of this one and this one and this one. You ever walked, Brother Jimmy, you ever walked into a funeral home when you knew somebody was really walking with God and they died? You go in there and it looked like they're sitting there saying, everything's all right. Just a little smile like on their face. Just when they lay down, just in peace. I never will forget the day we went down to the hospital. Brother Helms was there to bed. Wasn't one thing bothering him. Everything was peaceful. Remember that, Brother David? He had the peace. I looked at him and I said, 
Surely he's not, you know, he's not that bad off. He was sitting up in the bed talking to us just like we're sitting here talking now. And then the next thing I knew, I heard he went on to be the Lord. Boy, I tell you what, there was peace in his soul. And I tell you right now, I was, I was glad when God lifted the burden. I was glad when God lifted the burden. And he stepped on in on the other side. And boy, I tell you right now, he's, just, he's still on the other side. But he's waiting for some of us to come through this side. And when he we do, what a happy reunion it's going to be. Yes, sir. Saints will be glad when I'm gone. Amen. Amen. I can't wait. I get to heaven, Brother Thomas. I can't wait. I tell you what, if, if, if I could, I love my mama, I love my grandma, I love my grandpa, I love my mama, my daddy. I love my brothers and my sisters. If I knew they was in heaven, Brother Jimmy, and I could walk out that door and God say, you just call any of them you want back down here. I don't believe I'd call a one of them because yeah. I know they're in a better place. Uh, amen. Yeah. amen. Brother Roger, they're in a better place. Yeah. And they ain't gonna, they, they wouldn't be, they, there'll never be no more heartaches. There'll be, never be no more sickness, no more pain, no more death. They'll never experience that again. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, it's a wonderful thing. Amen. When I've fought a good fight, finished my course, and kept the faith. Hey. Amen. Last of all tonight, and I'm going to be through. He said, henceforth, there is laid up for me. Who's going to be glad when I'm gone? Mm. I'm going to be glad when I'm gone. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be glad when I'm gone. First of all, I'll see Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, friend, but that's what I got in this race for because I didn't want to go to hell. Amen. But I want to see my Lord. Amen. I've read about him. I've heard people talk about him. I've heard people testify about how good he is and everything about him. And I've read in here about Paul and Peter and John and all these. I've read about these men and, and go back into the prophets and you read and they tell about what God had done and Moses and what all he had done. I cannot wait till I can see my Lord. Amen. I'll be glad when I'm gone. Sure. Amen. Amen. Not only will I see my Jesus, but I'll see my mama, Amen. my dad, my loved ones. I got an old grandma that I loved her to death. Went to see her at the hospital. She was, uh, 80, 80, I think about 82 years old when grandma died. And uh, I went up there to see her that night. And, and I said, Grandma, I said, how you doing? She said, I'm doing all right, son. She said, but I'm just tired. She said, I'm just wore out. They said her heart was just wore out. Miss Shirley, she told me, she said, you know, she said, I just wish the Lord would just come on and get me. I never will forget that. Next morning, they went in the room about 9 o'clock, carried her breakfast in there, set her tray in there on her, right, right across her bed, right there on her. And the nurse said, Miss Tadlock said, I'll be right back. Said, I got to go over here and get something. The nurse said, I walked out of the room. Said, I wasn't gone five minutes. So I walked back in. Said, Miss Tadlock just laid back just like she was going to sleep. She had gone home to be with the Lord. Amen. Boy, I can't wait to see her. Grandma, what was it like that last five minutes when they brought that breakfast plate in there? She said, well, I just stepped on up and eat breakfast with the Lord. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting around his table? Woo! Hallelujah! Glory. Family will be reunited. Hey, I'll see my heavenly home. Not only that, but hey, I'll obtain some rewards. Huh? He said he's got some rewards for us. Yeah. Hallelujah. I can't wait. But you know what about the best thing about those rewards, Brother Arnold? That when we get there to the throne room, we'll take those crowns and we'll cast them at his feet and we'll say, worthy is the Lamb. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb. Yeah. <laughs> well, glory to God. Amen. What will it be like? Who will be happy when I'm gone? Amen. Satan will be glad when I'm gone. Sinners will be glad when I'm gone. Amen. Saints will be glad when I'm gone, but most of all, I'll be glad when I'm gone. Amen. 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 Praise God. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity. In Christ's name. Thank you, preacher. Let me give it to Brother Kenny. Let me give it to Brother Kenny. That's still on, brother. Yes, sir. That's a blessing, wasn't it? Yes, sir. I know that... Uh,